Hello everyone, my name is Serge and I'm going to be speaking about data quality with or without Apache Spark and its ecosystem. So overall, uh, we will talk about dimensions of data quality, about the frameworks and some short summaries about the things. So quickly about me, I'm Serge Smartin. I work as Senior Resident Solutions Architect at Databricks Amsterdam, and I've been working in all stages of the data lifecycle for the past 14 years. I've built uh, data science platforms from scratch, and I've analyzed malware through massively scaled data forensics, and I've built anti-PA analysis measures for payments industry. And here at Databricks, I'm bringing uh, strategic customers to the next level as the full-time job. So, that the quality requires certain level of sophistication within an enterprise to even understand that it's a problem. And this quote was from 2006, but it actually pertains even to the nowadays, because uh, what really happens is that uh, the data team deploys the first pipeline to production, everyone is happy, then uh, they deploy second, third, uh, fifth, and 10th pipeline to production. But then they started thinking, hmm, are we actually monitoring the data? Is our ETL pipeline actually healthy and robust enough for production use for other teams to trust the data sets that uh, are produced uh, by this pipeline. And then the whole big picture of uh, the data management comes into play. So almost every enterprise I've seen or worked in or worked with had similar-ish uh, picture. And let's break it down to the most fundamental parts. As you see, everything revolves around the enterprise under ETL process, which is extract, transform, load your data. And ETL process is really something huge. It's usually orchestrated by uh, different toolings like Azure Data Factory or Airflow or Databricks job framework or homegrown job framework. And essentially, ETL just moves the data around. Well, fine, nothing unusual so far. But then the companies who are Thinking about data quality, start thinking about introducing data quality checks. And then they ask us, okay, where do we need to run data quality checks and how? Well, the simplest answer that will get you far uh, along the way is to include data quality checks along in your ETL process. So whenever you create a table, make sure to define some of the data quality rules within the same file or within the same class. So that's uh, every time you get a new increment of the data, you also record metrics about data quality, be it number of unique records, the number of uh, uh, records with missing values, be it number of records with the wrong format, of course. You don't want any records that have the wrong format, or you don't want records with duplicate values, but yeah, it's real live data integration and uh, things happen in production. It's, uh, uh, it's more important to move fast and iterate fast and uh, don't stop until you're done than uh, building the perfect system from the beginning and uh, uh, deliver it uh, in a year and not within a month. So if you move fast enough and add that the quality a bit later, you are very good to go. Then, well, you record your data quality metrics, more about it in uh, the following slides, but you have to do something with your data quality metrics. Of course, uh, you need to display them in dashboards that will be presented to your on-call teams as uh, contextualized links. So your dashboards might be in uh, different toolings like Power BI or Databricks SQL Analytics or uh, things like Tableau or Looker, where you just show number of records or the curve of the data on how it looked over the time. And essentially, you need to deliver the links to these contextualized dashboards through some of the alerting mechanisms. So 
you can do many different ways of alerting uh, within the modern day ecosystem, but uh, we would recommend you to use the standard tooling that you already have in your organization. So be it Nakios or Azure Monitor or Amazon Simple Notification Service or something else, just use it. Make sure to include a component in your alerting system that might be called something like noise gate filter. What is a noise gate filter? So imagine you have 10 people on call that are looking at all of the alerts, not only about your pipeline, but also about your uh, website latency or uh, at uh, the health of the, your virtual machines or things like that. And people who are on call are so stressed and uh, they are looking at so many things that the smaller number of alerts you're sending them, the better it is. So having a successful machine learned noise filtering mechanism in your alerting framework is essential for your on-call people to trust the alerts from your data quality and it's also essential for the upper management to have the trust in your data because essentially whenever things go south people who are on call even you can receive the alert in a appropriate time and uh, then fix the problem the other thing you might ask well we have quality checks but how do we actually make them and then a concept of data profiling comes into play. Data profiling is generally part of larger enterprise data catalog initiatives, but sometimes it goes without it. More on that in a later slides. So if we dive deeper into types of quality checks that you need to be doing in your data monitoring pipeline, there will be things like completeness, are all of the items recorded as they have to be? You also have to check for consistency, meaning that you have to check if you can join the same record in your data lake with records coming from the other data sources or located in the other data sources. The example of uh, a format that might be inconsistent is a date format. In the United States, the most common format is month, day, year. And in Europe, the date format might be uh, day, month, year. Essentially, um, 05-09-2021 might mean either May the 9th or September the 5th. And if you don't have a consistent format for dates, you're in a big trouble and you have inconsistent data. This is just one of the many examples of inconsistency. The other thing is uniqueness. Obviously, uh, your data set must not contain duplicates. Mostly, um, they don't happen. But when they do, you have to build a strategy what to do with them. And duplicates may happen because of uh, limitations of the infrastructure with at least one deliver at least one's delivery, and so on. Like sometimes it's just easier to uh, accept at least one's delivery and uh, fix uh, the data later at later stages than uh, making sure that your delivery mechanism is exactly once. The other dimension that you need to be looking at is timeliness. Essentially, you need to make sure that the latency of your entire data pipeline is no bigger than acceptable threshold. And if you are monitoring that threshold, you're in a good position because if suddenly the data is not arriving to uh, its final destination in uh, your time, you might uh, be getting some SLA breaches. The other things uh, to look at are relevance and uh, validity, and we'll go deeper into those. So there are two fundamental approaches that data quality 
is done nowadays. The first one is record level. It's stream friendly. And uh, if you are doing record level data quality, you can quarantine invalid data so that you can debug and reprocess the invalid data at later stages of development. Make sure that you're going to be watching or re-watching. Make reliable ETL easy on Delta Lake talk, because that talk is going to reveal something interesting. And so you might learn about new concepts. And uh, I usually recommend re-watching that. Make reliable ETL easy on Delta Lake talk. This talk is going to be about data quality on the whole database level, which is batch by nature. Essentially, its purpose is to see the health of the entire pipeline. And uh, uh, the aim for database level uh, data quality checking is to detect processing anomalies. You cannot really detect them easy by using purely record level data quality. And uh, usually, on the whole database level quality testing, you employ reconciliation uh, testing and mutual information analysis techniques. Essentially, something you cannot really do easily or fast enough when you are only doing record level data quality. Do you need to pick one? No. Do you need to use both of them? By no means. Pick both of them and uh, uh, make sure you use either more of a database level data quality or record level data quality, depending on your needs. But remember, record level is to quarantine and reprocess later. And database quality, database level quality is about making sure that the whole data set is consistent. So there are a couple of ways how you can be making data quality checks. And obviously, one may tell, ask subject matter experts, because uh, they know how to define the shape of data. But it may, they may not fully cover all of uh, the corner cases. And uh, there might be more data sets than actual subject matters experts. And uh, only relying on expertise would not get you far. The other approach is exploration. With exploration, the people who are making the data quality checks are becoming the experts of data. This really happens when you onboard uh, new data sources uh, frequently enough and need to kind of develop the subject matter expertise of what's in those. So doing exploration type of data quality check development may result also in undercoverage. And you may miss the alerts once in a while, but still, it's better than just relying on subject matter expertise, which might not be there yet. And the third approach is semi-supervised code generation of data quality rules. Essentially, it heavily relies on data profiling and helps data engineers who need to cover a new data set with the automated tests quickly enough. Uh, data engineers who are working with automated data quality rule generation engines uh, may need to edit the generated code because generated code may overfit uh, the rules with too strict uh, criteria, and uh, people on call may receive too many alerts and stop trusting the alerts on data quality. Once you lose the trust of the alerting source, it's very difficult to gain it back. So make sure you don't over alert from the beginning. And the most important thing here, use all of these three techniques to develop the quality rules. Because just relying on one would not get you far. A couple of solutions exist on the market. And they are either uh, community-based or they are uh, and or they are packaged as enterprise software tools. Some of those uh, libraries uh, 
are shipped as uh, embeddable uh, Python wheels or Java jars, and sometimes they are shipped as uh, standalone platforms. It's up to you to pick one that fits the best, the needs and habits of your organization. All of these tools employ techniques like success keys. Essentially, a success key is uh, uh, zero or one key that uh, uh, is averaged to show the percentage of number of valid records. It's very streaming friendly. So record level um, data quality is using only success keys. The example of success key is, uh, is my email uh, having valid format one or zero? Or are all of the fields on this record valid or not one or zero? The other type of technique may be called domain keys. Domain keys check the incoming batch with the previous existing data set. It might be slow to compute, but things like computing number of unique keys is the perfect example of uh, domain key technique that validates against the existing data set. The other technique that is being employed frequently is called data set metrics, which is essentially a materialized synthetic aggregation like is this batch uh, uh, two standard uh, deviations away uh, of number of records uh, from previous uh, batches? And whenever you have incoming batch that is two sigmas away, you make the alert. This technique is the most simple one, but it actually uh, catches uh, a lot of uh, serious issues without over alerting. And the other technique that is being employed may be called reconciliation tests, where essentially you're repeating the entire uh, computation independently to verify that things like uh, uh, balances on the accounts are uh, in sane uh, buckets. So typical example here is uh, double entry bookkeeping, where number of debit and number of credits uh, dollars must uh, zero out and uh, essentially some of uh, the systems are building in reconciliation testing into their design. So let's talk about frameworks. If you build your own everything, consider embedding uh, the tool called Diku. It has constant, uh, it has a constraint suggestion engine and uh, data profiling among their enterprise uh, features. This tool is very mature in terms of uh, check availability, though documentation is pretty scarce. You have to read a lot of Scala source code and uh, most likely, my very big advice, you'll have to fork Amazon Labs DQ into your organization and start maintaining the copy of it. You'll save a lot of time by just forking this tool internally, and uh, you would not be relying on slow pull request acceptance that is uh, uh, shown as a historical trends within this repository. It's been there for a while. It's been backed by Amazon Labs. There is no production support for it, but you can use it, save uh, some of uh, your time by writing a data quality framework. It's better to use the existing one. One of very good features that I like about Amazon DQ is uh, the code generation. Given a data set, it can start a Spark job that will uh, profile your entire data set and then output a perfectly working automated data quality checks. Essentially, you would not have to spend time figuring out what are the allowed ranges of a value R or what is uh, the uniqueness constraints of the uh, column. You just, launch you just launch construct suggestion runner, and then uh, it will uh, spit out the code that you added a bit and put to your production pipeline. But you'll have to do it only after you collect at least week or month of data. The second tooling I would like to tell you about is uh, called Great Expectations, 
which is less enterprisey data validation platform. It's written entirely in Python. It's Python first, and it focuses on supporting Apache Spark among other data sources like Postgres, Pandas, SQL Alchemy, BigQuery, and others. And if you're Python first company, you may look at this. Essentially, great expectations is having native bidirectional integration with Pandas Profiling Toolkit. Pandas Profiling Toolkit provides exploratory data analysis on steroids by generating HTML report that has distributions of data, number of unique values, the most frequent keys, correlations, and many other techniques. If you haven't heard about Pandas Profiling, here is a link that you have to go and visit now because it might greatly help in discovering new correlations of your data set and having your data set documented on a regular basis. The third tool I would like you to, to know about is called Apache Griffin, which may be the most enterprise-oriented tooling with a user interface. And it's Apache top-level project, and it's backed up by eBay since 2016. It's not as easy embeddable to existing applications because you have to run a separate Spring Boot-based process, and it requires a JSON DSL for configuration that has to be deployed somehow. But still, it has the user interface, and having no user interface sometimes is worse than having some user interface. So be aware of Apache Griffin, and uh, essentially it might allow you to combine the Spark SQL with other internal DSLs. So you'll have to learn another DSL anyway, with, as with any of these frameworks. But now I want to go through a couple of examples on how typical DSLs for these two links do look like. So in this very first example of completeness check, we want to catch the columns that are having no null values. So as you see the code on the top left that is related to Python implementation of DQ, you may see it follows builder pattern. So if you're coming from a software engineering uh, backgrounds, if you allow Spark data frames, DQ might be the most easy to write the result, uh, easy to write checks in for you because it follows Spark data frame ideology and it's builder friendly, it's software engineering friendly. So you'll love it if you're coming from that background. If you're coming from Python background, and uh, have a lot of pandas code base uh, in uh, your uh, experience and uh, if you want to have very explicit method names create expectations is the framework for you of course you can write any data quality framework from scratch in PySpark or in uh, scala data frame syntax from scratch completely by yourself uh, of course you can do you want to do it Probably not, but you can. And of course, you can do data quality checking with simple SQL. So data quality is simple monitoring that might scale to thousands of different checks in a typical enterprise. And make sure you have some framework of it, or you take the best points from the existing framework. The other example is about the uniqueness checks. Uniqueness checks are quite similar to completeness checks, but they just check number of records uh, in a data set against the number of unique records within a column within a data set, and then outputs a metric. Of course, it's very easy and transparent to do with uh, DQ, and it's also similar to do with great expectations and SQL and Spark are the same. But then, once you 
start employing a bit more advanced checks like is this data set having some of this column greater than some of the other column provide me the alert it might be a bit more difficult to do in other frameworks than the queue so keep that in mind then type of metric you have to be looking at frequently is timeliness of data. Essentially, timeliness of data is the amount of seconds between current time and the event time that happens at the lowest level of granularity in the source system. Usually, your data travels among uh, uh, many different steps in your pipeline, and you have to just subtract the current time you have to subtract the event time as it happens in the edge from the current time and output it as number of seconds that is a delay of processing for this make sure you monitor that because this is the simplest and the most effective way of knowing if you are late with processing your data or not. I'd like to mention a couple of other uh, frameworks that were not featured in this presentation. So one of them is called uh, Drunken Data Quality or DDQ. It's pretty fluent in syntax. It might be even better than uh, Amazon Labs DQ, but it's no longer maintained. The other upcoming data quality framework is called data frame rules engine from databricks labs it's purely scala oriented and uh, it didn't have a lot of uh, contributors uh, recently and it's pretty fresh it's only like nine months old as th at the time of uh, this presentation so you might look at those two as well to gather inspiration or make it work and once again make sure to rewatch, make reliability easy on Delta Lake Talk uh, to get more insights on uh, how to deal with record level data quality in an easy and reliable way. Thank you. Please leave the feedback uh, in the form below. And uh, it was a pleasure delivering this talk to you. This was Serge from Databricks. Thank you.